Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by my special guest, Cobanermani456. I thought I'd have him join me to talk about his thoughts on Sonic Boom for the Wii U and 3DS, since we both had the chance to play it at E3. So before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, what's up everyone? Cobanermani456 here, and thank you, Derek, for having me. It's such an honor to be, um, you know, here right now with you. Oh, no problem. It's great to have you on. Kobe does a couple Let's Plays for Nintendo, and specifically Sonic, so I thought who better to have on here to talk about about Sonic Boom. So I guess general impressions on the on the demo. Um, and we're talking about the 3DS version, right? Just the 3DS. Well, we're we'll talking about the. Well, let's start with the Wii U version, I think. All right. Um, <laughs> so when I was, uh, you know, going to E3 and you know trying to get out, I was really really excited for it, but skeptical at the same time after what I had seen just a couple of weeks before E3, since they released some gameplay trailers. And my skepticism was right because I really was not that impressed with the game at all when I tried it out. You know, I was going into it, you know, ready to give it a chance since, you know, the people at Big Red Button had always said that, you know, it was going to be an entirely different Sonic game. Still have some, you know, like, s still have some similarities to the main Sonic series, but at the same time be completely different to where it's offering a totally different experience for, you know, new people to the franchise. And, you know, just from what I played, it, it wasn't as, you know, exciting as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, the best thing I can describe it as is, like, I'd heard about this from, uh, you know, Andre and Ash had been able to play the early demo where they got all those impressions when those gameplay videos came from and they were talking to me about it and telling me all this stuff I was like no 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 don't tell me these things I mean it was, I was I actually had a lot of hope mainly because of Big Red Button because hearing their pedigree you know working with Naughty Dog and all their experience with Crash Bandicoot and uh, Jack and Daxter I was really hopeful for it but yeah as I played it it wasn't I felt it wasn't as bad as they had made it out to be at least for me personally but I still there what there's definitely problems and I would even say it's because it doesn't exactly feel like a Sonic game would you no it, it's not that it doesn't feel like a Sonic game that's not the reason why I wasn't impressed by it um, I just felt that it's not a bad game but it's not an exciting or an interesting game either like everything I played was just just kind of a bit boring honestly that that's that's probably the best way i can put it like there there was nothing wrong with it it's just it didn't do anything particularly special at all yeah the the levels felt i guess the best way i could put it is kind of flat like go here do this fight these enemies go do this push this little bit forward and just very kind of slow progression is exactly it? um i felt that uh you know like that's one thing about the sonic series you know i've always thought that the level design and you know the levels have had so much variety and there's just so much crazy stuff going on but in this game that didn't really feel like that was the case and it, it is a slow game it's so slow and it honestly felt like it was on the same pace as like an Epic Mickey game. Like, have you ever played the Epic mm -hmm. Mickey series? Yes, I played the first one, not the second one. But yeah, you're right. It is about the same pace. I was thinking more along the lines of, ironically enough, uh, Jack and Daxter, if you ever played that. Um, I actually have not really played that that much. I played um, I played a little bit of Ratchet and Clank on uh, one of my friends. Um, I believe it was PlayStation Portables or something like that. But I've, I don't have you know too much experience with those two series to be able to compare them it, it's kind of the same thing where you're just sort of running through this world solving puzzles fighting enemies but the difference was for me is that and i think uh is that whenever you fought an enemy in jack and daxter at least the first one um it was very immediate you hit the enemy they they died or they just required a couple multiple hits but they were always very simple and they seem to be really emphasizing the combat in this game. Oh, definitely. Actually, it, it feels like with how the game is right now, it feels very close to like how the Werehog was in Sonic Unleashed, to where you know they're they're you're gonna run into several hordes of enemies, and you just have to basically mash the button. But I didn't really find any interesting combos like. You know Sonic Unleashed hat because I know a lot of people mm -hmm. hated the Werehog and all that stuff <laughs> in Sonic Unleashed and I can understand why 
But, you know, I found some enjoyment out of it because I thought it was pretty cool to see, you know, the crazy combos that you could pull off. You know, they, they kept it interesting in that way. Yeah. But with this game, I, I didn't really see that so much. And, y yeah, it, it, it had a feel similar to, like, the Werehog gameplay in, you know, Sonic Unleashed. You know, I didn't think about that at the time, but you are kind of right where you just, you're moving along and then you got to stop for the enemies that show up and take care of them. And they do try to keep, actually, no, now that I think about it, the tether is almost like Sonic's arms in Sonic Unleashed. Holy crap, you're right. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, was, I was just thinking about that. I was like, well, they got the tether now where you can do different things. And I was thinking about it like, no. That's just his long arms in the in the in the werehog <laughs> yeah, stages. Yeah, because now that I think about the werehog, could the werehog could pick up enemies and fling them at other enemies, and he used that with his strong, like um, stretchy, elastic arms. So uh -huh. yeah, you're right. And I, I thought that it was going to be interesting what they were going to do with the inner beam because they talked so much about it that mm -hmm. it reminded me of like you know the whole Knuckles Chaotix you know, form of gameplay. Yeah. But honestly, the ways they use it are really, really just dull. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it seems like every single boss that I've seen so far has you just pick up another enemy, swing it around, and then toss it the big boss. Or, you know, you use the tether to reach a switch on, you know, like a platform that's away from you. It's nothing that really seemed too deep. But at the same time, you know, one thing that I still do keep in mind, which is why I've said, you know, from what I played, I wasn't impressed with it, but I can't judge the game just yet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is just initial impressions. That's all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> from what I played, you know, I wasn't impressed. But when I actually talked to, uh, you know, one of the people, I, I believe he's the lead designer, uh, Stephen Frost from Big Red Button. He was talking to me about how it was really difficult for them to decide, you know, what they wanted to present in the demo. Because they were like, well, you know, we could just have, you know, all speed and everything, but... And, you know, try and please fans. But we already know that the entire game isn't just that. So what we tried to do was try and present, you know, a stage that would get the point across that this isn't like a typical Sonic game. This is entirely different. Sure, there's going to be some speed in some areas. Like, I don't, I don't know if you played the speed stage or not. I, I got the chance to play all the stages. For okay, sure. awesome. I got to play, I believe, the jungle stage, the factory stage, and the speed stage. But I did not get to play the Eggman boss. You're not missing much. You, you basically nailed the you know right in the head where it's pick up an enemy, throw it at him. <laughs> that him that's the bit. only reason why I didn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Eggman is awesome in that at boss fight. Listen to his quotes and whatnot. But the the battle itself is the same as everything else you play. Exactly. Like I I heard uh, some of his lines, and it kind of reminded me of. Uh, uh, his PR clips from Sonic Colors, like they're just little short lines, and they just kind of you know make you chuckle a little bit. So you know, <laughs> yeah. I I'm glad that you know he's you know like he's retained his character in Sonic Boom. But yeah, like you know, so when he said that, I was just like, well, from what I played, all I know is that if there if the adventure gameplay is going to be like this, I'm not gonna really be that impressed or that interested with it but mm -hmm. you know if he's saying that this was just you know trying to showcase that this is an entirely different you know sonic game instead of just trying to show us everything that's in the game then you know i can't really judge it and just be like no this game's not going to be good but yeah i mean the the thing with this is that um it did i think the bigger problem for me was it felt not quite finished. It's, it felt like I was running into a couple like glitches that I've seen in other games before, like where I jumped on. I think there was mushrooms around at some point, and I was jumping around exploring a bit, and I got sort of like hang time on above the mushroom where I couldn't get down until a little bit where it sort of slid me off eventually. You know, it feels like it needs some polish, but I think there is a good idea in here where they're like if they could just polish it up, make it a little bit more exciting, and maybe some of the later levels do that because I did see moments of. Um, inspiration in the Sonic and Amy level in the factory mm -hmm. because I, I felt that had a much better mix of this new exploration combat puzzle solving thing than the, the, the Sonic and Knuckles stage did. yeah um, I, I agree with you about that completely like you know I like how there is um, an exploration factor to the game I, I think that's really really good 
and that was actually um, one of the more interesting stages in my opinion. I, I never did mm -hmm. actually run into a glitch. That's the funny thing. I never ran into a single glitch in that entire thing. Like, it took me a while to get used to the controls because the homing attack is like a different button map. So I was pressing, yeah. <laughs> I was pressing the jump button, like I was pressing the A button trying to jump, but all I would do is just like roll or whatever. So that kind of threw me off a lot. I do like how, you know, they've put a huge emphasis on exploration. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, Sonic's always, you know, been good about like always people always talking about how Sonic is just all about speed, getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. And that's never been Sonic to me. It's always been a bit, yeah, you can go fast, but there's always this element of exploration where you can find a better path, a faster path, a path that has more rewards to it. And I do like that they are bringing that into into the game where you always have the choice like, okay, I can go through this section as Sonic or I can go through this section as Knuckles. And I get the feeling in the full game like there'll be different collectibles in each one that'll make it worth exploring. So you want to go through the section with both characters and really see everything. Yeah, yeah, that that is another thing. Um that I agree with you on about, you know, how Sonic isn't just all about speed. You know, there's always been, you know, the exploration factor. Like, if you play the classics, you're not just going to be running the entire time. You know, I do feel that, you know, even though this is a different game, I would have liked for there to have been some speed in the exploration sections because I did mm. like that option to where you can decide whether or not you want to go fast through the stages or if you want to you know just explore and find different pathways and secrets and that's one reason why you know i've always loved like games like sonic 3 knuckles and all that stuff because it gave you that sense of freedom to where you can decide whether or not you want to go fast or whether or not you want to explore instead of just forcing one of them onto you instead of giving you the option mm -hmm. between those two which, you know, I feel that Sonic Boom, it, it does, you know, give you exploration. I just feel that I, I, I kind of hate how it's somewhat separated to where, you mm -hmm. know, you can't decide. You're, you're kind of forced to where you're at a slow pace and you can decide whether or not you just want to go through the stage regularly or if you want to go through it, you know, exploring. No, you, you do make a good point there. I think that's why kind of like the Amy stage a little bit better because there was at least a little bit of a speed option even though it was pretty much on rails mm -hmm. but just still not going that fast and even the speed section didn't feel that fast no it didn't and like when i played it that wasn't really the problem because mm -hmm. you know if you play games like sonic adventure uh dx or you know, Sonic Adventure 2 or whatever. Those games are fast, but they're not, like, you know, super fast like the modern Sonic games. Yeah, exactly. There's a bit, a bit of a balance Yeah, exactly. There. And, you know, that um, that was one reason why I never really understood why people complained about Sonic Lost World so much. But um, <laughs> the problem for me wasn't the speed at all. It was how it was just so on rails to where it felt like you weren't doing much of anything. It felt like what they were trying to do with speed was just make you go fast. And the game just ended up feeling like kind of like uh, the Sonic Dash mobile game, but just in HD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I felt <laughs> like I was playing when uh, I was playing it. But instead, when I get hit by something, I lose rings. I don't have to pay $5 to get some extra coins <laughs> to progress. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, at yeah, at least there's that. <laughs> but the speed sections uh, didn't feel like, you know, the other Sonic games that you play in the series to where you feel like you do have control or that you have to make, you know, decisions. It just felt like, you know, you just move left and right and just avoid some. <laughs> yeah, avoid some blocks and then maybe you get a, a couple different paths, whether if you decide to use uh, the, the inner beam at this point or, or not. And that was pretty much it. I mean, it was... It, it again pretty much felt on yeah. rails and that you know and that can that could work i mean so i hear sonic dash is actually kind of oh, fun it is. And, it, and it's completely on rails but there's there's i don't know there's some thing that they're kind of missing that makes it all click i guess and maybe the full game will have that and or maybe they just need a couple a little bit more development time but yeah it, it feels like the big clicking part where it's like yeah this is a lot of fun it's just not there yeah, yet yeah exactly um, I, I, I really do hope that they get it right before the game comes out because this was definitely one of the games I was most excited for for the Wii U to come out later this year. 
and then to play it at E3, I was just kind of like, ah, I don't know so much anymore. <laughs> and, you know, people, like, when I actually went to E3, people were like, yeah, go, we go there, you know, prove all these people wrong. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, oh no. God. I, it was like, I got a sick <laughs> feeling in my stomach when I played it. I was just like, yeah. Oh, uh, people aren't gonna like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I think it'll definitely um, interest, you know, some people who like those games mm -hmm. like that because it does feel more so like an old school platformer. Like mm -hmm. it's a slower pace, and yeah, it's it, it's very slow. But that's how some of the old school platforming games were back then. And honestly, like when you're a kid. You're kind of a bit more forgiving on that, I guess, to where you play those games, mm -hmm. and even though, you know, they may not hold up or age well, you know, they were fun back then to play. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you play games that are similar to that, you know, you find enjoyment out of it because you get that nostalgia feel. So I can see why, you know, if some people actually do like this game, I can understand why. But, you know, like I said, it feels kind of old school with some of its ideas. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely not very modern. But, I, you know, I just, I you know, I, I like I said, like you said, I have hope for this game. I hope it's going to be good and, you know, I'm going to be playing it, of course, because this is, to me, a pretty big Wii U title. This is an exclusive Sonic game, whole new thing connected with a the show. There, it seems like there's a good bit of writing on this oh, game. Oh, yeah, the, the writing actually seems really good, though I, I will say... Um, have you noticed, but Sonic's a bit more of a douche in this game than any <laughs> other game I've ever seen. It, it's crazy. Like, I was just listening to this and I was like, whoa, what the heck? Like, who wrote this? <laughs> this is like... <laughs> like, what are, what are some of the clips that you, that stuck out for you? Because I'm trying to think of, like, especially... Yeah, so lines. Sonic's always, has always <laughs> been a cocky character, you know? But he, it, it's yeah. like more of a joking way. It doesn't seem like it's too serious. And... In this game, he's like, like they're talking about how you know, yay! Knuckles is like, we finally made it through the jungle, all that stuff. And he's just like, oh yeah, you all are a great supporting cast. Thanks. <laughs> it's just like he's just <laughs> like, are you are you serious right now? And then he's just like, um, I can't recall what exactly he said, but it's basically just like, like you're insane or like you're crazy. And then Sonic's like, thanks, I know I am. <laughs> it's just like, whoa, <laughs> like Sonic's being a complete jerk to his friends. Well, maybe that's, I think I heard somewhere that maybe they're actually going to give Sonic a character arc this time where he does start out kind of douchey and very arrogant and doesn't think he needs any of his friends. And by the end, they that's what they, they, they got to show, which, you know, is not a new character arc by any means, but... I mean, it's at least something a little different for Sonic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that that would be really good if it did show him, you know, kind of realize later on, that, hey, I need to stop being so cocky. You know, these are my friends, you know, <laughs> I got to stick with them. And they, they all play an important role on the team. Because another part that I found really funny was how um, Sonic and Knuckles were stuck in the jungle. And Sonic's like, you know, if you can't keep up, you can go with those other slow pokes. <laughs> and Knuckles is just like, one of these days, I'm just gonna sock you in the face. <laughs> it's just like, dang, whoa, this is this is getting a little bit spicy right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, speaking of Knuckles, I completely forgot about this. How do you feel about them completely taking away his glide ability? I thought that was weird. Like, I, I thought he had it. That, that was a funny thing. But um, apparently, it seems like he's able to dig and he can take out any more easily and then he can also kind of climb go up yeah climb and what is it it's almost like monkey bar on ceilings or whatever oh Something yeah like yeah that. just go along the so. ceilings yeah I mean I, I can understand why they did it because they don't want to have any overlap with tails and make all the characters feel distinct yeah but tails um well I'm not sure because I don't think you play with Tails in the Wii U version. No, we didn't get the chance to play with Tails in the Wii I, U I version. I wonder if he is going to have the ability to fly or not. Because if you play the 3DS version, he can't fly by himself at all. Which I thought was kind of polarizing. I don't remember trying that out specifically in the 3DS version. But in the Wii U, I know he can fly because there is that little bit in the uh, reveal trailer where they see show him flying up the same little ramp that Sonic spin dashes up. So. Oh yeah, that's right. You're right about that. Okay. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> no worries. Oh, speaking of the reveal trailer, is it just me or does the game look a lot like it, it, it doesn't look as good as it did when it was first revealed? 
No, it, it did, that did seem like not a major drop in quality, but definitely a drop where you can notice like there's it's not as I don't know, not quite as smooth. And that's the thing, I didn't feel like the the the, the reveal trailer was that impressive looking itself. No, that one wasn't as impressive look. Like it, it wasn't like super impressive, like you know, graphics that we'd see on you know PS4, Xbox One, oh, or yeah, whatever. But... I mean, it looked good enough, and you mm -hmm. could tell that it was still early in development, but it looked good. Mm -hmm. But you know, considering that we're so close to the release date of the game coming out in just a few months, and to see that you know this latest trailer. And, you know, the E3 build that we played, it looked slightly worse than what we saw in the reveal trailer. That kind of concerned me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, maybe the demo version's from an earlier build of the game. Maybe that's maybe that's the hope, is that they have a better build, build but they it's not quite stable. Mm -hmm. So they use an earlier build for the demo. Hopefully so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much covers the gameplay for the Wii U version, but, you know, they got this new story going on, you know, the completely new, you know, take on Sonic, and a new villain with uh, Lyric, who's reptilian snake guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> who they're trying to build up as, like, a more menacing force than um, Eggman, which strikes me as odd, because I, when I look at his face, he looks really goofy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he really does. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, what you think the story's going to be any good, or... Doesn't that matter to you, or just you know, or at least I think we can both agree that the writing, like the the joke writing, is actually pretty decent in this game. Yeah, it's it's actually really good. Um, oh, you know, there's a lot more character interaction, and you know, while some of it is really really cheesy, which is what we've you know <laughs> expected to see in the Sonic series after yeah. you know we've seen so many cheesy lines <laughs> in the games, <laughs> it's still really good. It's you know, the writing is very similar to like what we'd see in Sonic Colors or something like that to where, you know, it's lighthearted and cheesy, but at the same time, you know, it's still it still will definitely, you know, make you chuckle a few times. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sonic's kind of a cheesy character when you get right down to it, but he's still lovable, and I think that's it strikes that great balance between, you know, yeah, this is cheesy, but I can't help but love the guy. <laughs> I feel that this game definitely is targeted towards a younger audience. You know, it kind of does have that cheesiness, like what you'd expect in, like, a Saturday morning TV show, but at the same time, you do have to remember, this series, this, you know, franchise is supposed to be entirely for, you know new new people to the series mm -hmm. you know sega sonic team um sega of japan sonic team are still going to make you know the traditional sonic games that we know and love and they're going to focus less on you know trying to target it like younger audiences with the story and go more so to what how they were before with mm -hmm. you know like sega genesis and dreamcast where they tried to target you know a teenage teenager audience mm -hmm. so I, I can understand if this game is going to be a bit cheesy in some ways, but, you know, at least we'll have Sonic Team to have, yeah. you know, the traditional games that we usually get. Well, that's a great thing. We get two different ver versions of the character, and, yeah, they're spread out a little bit more, which should help with the development time, so they have more time to actually work on the games and, you know, get that quality in there. They're not, I hope, they, theoretically, they shouldn't be as rushed this time. Exactly. Um, so that, yeah, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think that's great very good yeah exactly uh, but no I mean I'm, I'm with you I mean it, it's kind of fitting that it's kind of cheesy and Saturday morning cartoonish since that's essentially what it's based on <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the TV show is coming out soon too and the writing from what I've heard with that is going to be amazing like mm -hmm. so many people are saying right now it's probably going to be one of the best TV shows that's going to be coming out soon so, I hope so I'm, I'm actually really really excited about the TV show yeah because I, I liked the first season of like Sonic X and all that stuff, but then afterwards it just kind of got meh. But <laughs> I, I, I'm really hoping that this uh, new TV show delivers. So I, I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing the story of Sonic Boom. I think it will be good. Yeah, I am too. Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely good to see it coming back. I mean, I grew up with you know Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, Sad AM. Yes. And <laughs> Watched watched a little watched a little bit of Sonic X. I was a bit older at that point and sort of got out of Sonic at that yeah you know, for a little bit. So I watched a couple episodes. It's like I hate this this yeah you know, Chris this characters Chris yeah. Yep. It's like <laughs> what what's this kid doing here? Get rid of him and you know just I don't know. It's just 
uh, too much of an adjustment for me, and I was like, eh, I'll skip it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's nice to hear it's, it got it was good. So, um, but yeah, no, I, it, I'm I'm pretty excited for the TV show, and I'll be you not know, like you know, I watch other. I watch cartoons still. I don't, I'm not afraid to admit it. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't understand why some people in this day and age are just like, you watch a cartoon? You're a kid or something like that. It's so. just like, it, it's all about entertainment, you know? You can be mm-hmm. a child at heart no matter what. Oh, so yeah. that's why I still do find, you know, like Sonic games still entertaining to play and even the storylines sometimes interesting. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's all I ask for. I don't need, like, Shakespeare, just give me something entertaining that I can digest and have fun with, and I'm I'm good to go. And I think that's what we're getting here. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm. <laughs> I, I think it'll be a good story for sure. I think I, I'm not too concerned about the story at all. What's Sonic Boom? I think it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, if anything, that'll probably be the best part of the game for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at least at this point. Uh, hopefully, the gameplay match catches up with it. But at least the story will be fun. But yeah, uh, completely changing pace. Well, kind of. Let's talk about the 3DS version, which is uh, Shattered Crystal. I think we have a completely like 180 view of this game compared to uh, Rise of Lyric because. You know, I love the demo there, and I, I think you felt the same way. Oh yes, <laughs> I, I loved it so much. It, was, I, I honestly wanted to keep on playing it, but you know, I had mm-hmm. a deadline. I had to go do some other stuff, so I couldn't play it anymore. But from what I played, it, it was just so much fun because it felt like a Sonic game, but it also felt like a new experience. Like it felt like it was Sonic Boom. Like we were getting mm-hmm. these new characters, and they had their abilities and whatnot. But at the same time, it still kept that speed that made it feel like a Sonic game. Because how I've always felt with Sonic games is that, you know, hey, if you're going to branch out and do other stuff, that's perfectly fine and whatnot. But the thing that always, you know, made me love Sonic games so much was that it was a platformer, but it was Mm -hmm. unique in its way to where it had... An emphasis on speed to where what they wanted you to do was play through the stages multiple times try to find the best pathway or route and then go through that and then the speed was a reward and then you could decide whether or not you wanted to explore and find other stuff and you know kind of just go at your own pace and go slow so yeah. I always, I always loved those options, you know, to decide whether or not you wanted to go fast and speed run through it, or if you just wanted to explore. And I felt like that's what they're doing with this game. You know, you don't have to go on every single pathway, or, and you don't feel like you're being forced to explore. You feel like you have a lot more freedom, you have a lot more decisions to where you can decide whether or not, you know, you want to go fast or if you want to explore and go slow, <laughs> like the classic <laughs> games. Yeah. So that, I, I really enjoyed what they did, and each character had their own abilities. Still felt fast, you know, to where Knuckles can dig under the ground, kind of like the Drill Wisp from Sonic Colors. Um, Sticks had the boomerang that could activate switches, and then Tails had the ability to. It, it was like shoot little robots or bombs or yeah, something like that. Throw throw bombs. I think he could fly in a limited fashion. I think. He cannot fly. That's the funny thing. He had. He's only um, able to fly with air drafts. That's that's what I was. That's gonna, right. He needs the air drafts in order to fly. I forgot about that part. And it seemed like a lot of people were actually upset with that because <laughs> it's like, here's a character that was perfectly able to fly and pass on games, mm-hmm. and now he's kind of being downgraded to where he needs a little bit of wind <laughs> to, to fly. <laughs> so yeah, that that part is a little unfortunate, but uh, it's. I can sort of forgive it yeah. a little bit because they got to, you know, they got to make it because Tails could break the game otherwise. Ex- exactly. Here. So I, I can understand why they did that. You know, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't. It's not. A, it's you know something that's just kind of a little bit polarizing, but once you play it, it doesn't feel bad. When I was playing the demo, I actually had uh, the creative director there with me. He was talking with me as I was playing. And I, I asked him, like, one of the things that confused me most when I saw that, because, you know, everybody was always talking about, you know, what makes Sonic unique from the other characters, and it's always come down to his his boost and his um, homing attack. So it struck me as odd for this game that everybody has the homing attack. And so when I spoke with the creative director, I was like, what was, the, what was that decision? Like, why did you guys decide to do that? 
And what he basically said is they want to have the characters play similarly enough that so when you do switch, it's not like you have to memorize a completely different set of controls. Like, you know, that you have to remember that, okay, Sonic can do this, but, you know, Tails cannot. And if I try to push this button, all of a sudden that homing attack is not going to happen. They, But they, you know, wanted to strike that balance between differentiating the characters, but also making them, you know... Uh, play similarly enough that you can swap between them with no problems and I think they succeeded because I played with that where I switched characters on the fly and I could just boom right into them no problem did you did you play with that at all yes and I saw some people actually mentioning that in the comments on my video talking about how uh, well on the video that I made and um, mm-hmm. talking about how each character had a homing attack and people thought that was weird and I probably should have gone into that but you know the reason why I didn't even think about going into it was because it felt natural. Like, you know, even though, you know, you're like normally, oh wait, I thought Sonic was the one who was supposed to have the homing attack. It's really good that they didn't just limit it to him because that would put, I, I feel that that would put like even more emphasis on just playing as Sonic alone. I, I, I like how they did that because, you know, constantly having to switch between a character like that you know, just to take out an enemy more easily, that that's that's too much to be doing at one time, I think. Especially yeah. for a game like this. So, I, I, I don't think that was a bad idea at all to give them the homing attack. But they still make sure that the characters feel unique in their own way. It, it's kind of like, ex- exactly like how, um, you know, the original Sonic games were. Each character had a very similar, you know, moveset but mm-hmm. each character had their own special ability that wasn't necessary but you know it just made them unique and gave them different strengths and abilities to explore different pathways so i think that's what they kind of did with this game they really did find that great balance between the two and I, i'm not sure if you noticed or not but I, I played around with it and sonic is indeed the fastest as you're playing through they actually did make sure that knuckles is actually very slow yeah exactly i, I was talking about that too i was just like did they, did they like just pull everything out of Sonic 3 and Knuckles and try and put into this game? Because that, <laughs> that's exactly how it is in that game. You know, Sonic is like the fastest in the game, and Tails and Sticks are very, very close in speed, and then Knuckles is the slowest. And I think Sonic also has a spin dash. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. He yes. does, but it's really not that great. It's just better running, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I, I really do like how they just kind of made it feel like a new experience, but at the same time kept that Sonic feel to it, mm-hmm. to where it feels like I am playing, you know, a Sonic game. Yeah, it, they, they really nailed the feeling. And that's just the, the regular adventure levels, which even has its own unique sort of idea now that I've never really thought of for a Sonic game because uh, basically each of these adventure levels is its own sort of Castlevania type thing. Mm-hmm. If you ever played, you know, the, the, the you know, Metroidvania type games. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, because there's you can come back once you... Because you, I they believe they said that you only start out with Sonic and then as you progress with the game, you unlock, you know, Tails, Sticks, and Knuckles. And then you can go back to the levels and unlock more stuff to find even more things for you to use and uh, more things to explore and really get some more out of that level. And I thought, like, never thought about that for a Sonic game, but it's kind of brilliant. I didn't realize that. That's that's kind of... I, I didn't even know that you had to unlock those characters. I thought they were all available at the beginning. When I talked to the uh, creative director, he said, you gotta, you gotta, you only start with Sonic and then you unlock everybody as you go through. And that gives you an incentive to come back to, to the previous level so you can explore. Huh. So this, it almost sounds somewhat like Sonic Colors with the Wisps. Yeah, a little bit. Because in Sonic Colors, you just start out with like the boost and then like one Wisp. But then over time, when you play the game more, you unlock the other wisps, which allow you to reach different areas and find collectibles like the red rings, mm-hmm. so that you can turn Super Sonic. So yeah, it sounds like it's gonna be like that, to where you know you can just play through stage regularly, and then over time, unlock the other characters, and you'll be able to explore and find the secrets to each world. Exactly. That's I, I love that design. Like it, it, like you don't have to go back through and play it if you don't want to. Like you said, you can just speed through those levels as Sonic and not worry about it. But if you want to explore, you have the option to come back with these other characters and use their abilities. I love that so much. I think that I think that's how pretty much every Sonic game should be. <laughs> it, you know still bring new stuff to the table and you know, new experiences but still stick to the core 
one thing that I thought was really interesting. I, I don't know why they added it, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, did you ever get to play the submarine mini game for Tails? I didn't. I missed out on that, but I've heard about it. How did that play? It kind of reminded me of Steel Diver. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so I don't know how many people are gonna be like, "Oh no, not that again." <laughs> but you know, I liked Steel Diver, and I thought that was pretty fun. But these are more kind of like mini games. Like it's it's just maybe for like 30 seconds, and you're supposed to find a little like treasure collectible, and you control Tails' as submarine. I, I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I like how. They kind of have some references to some old things in the Sonic series. I thought that was kind of cool to play around with. Talk about references I wasn't expecting. Like, did you try out one of the rival the rival race against sticks? I did not. I, I really wanted to, but I didn't have the time because I had to leave right after that. Have you played the rivals games before? No, but I heard their I heard the rival races are going to be very similar to how Sonic Rivals plays. Yeah, ex except that, that you can't really inter you can't really interact with sticks at all. You're just constantly running, bes you know, beside in front of her or behind her or beside her, and you can't really do anything to affect her. So it's not really a rival. It's more like a race. It's, it's it is a pure race. But it was so exhilarating because it's you're you're going fast. You're basically looking ahead of you and seeing what's coming, and it it never feels cheap. It never feels like you get blindsided by anything coming at you. You always see perfectly clear what is coming and then you just react to it it felt so fluid and so fast and so fun i was like like that was just damn near perfect like people who want speed gameplay out of sonic right there it is i i really wish i would have now that i heard about it because you know i liked the rivals games somewhat but i did feel that at times you know, the level design was kind of a bit bad in some areas <laughs> yeah. to where it just took you by surprise. But if that's the case, that sounds fantastic. I, I, I really, really cannot wait for the 3DS version. That That's definitely going to be the one you want to pick up this year after yeah. what we've played because... <laughs> That that sounds great. And then yeah. I heard that there's um there are 3D sections, almost kind of like the special stages and like Sonic Generations 3DS and all that stuff. Yep. You didn't get to try that either. No, I didn't. How did those play? It, it's pretty much as, as you said, but except it's a little bit more guided. It's not like um the the other uh wait, the other those other games where you can go back and forth as much as you want. This time you're sort of following a set path, but you're shifting the world in order to follow that path and if you don't you fall off and you're sort of like the entire time you're chasing after this worm and the, the worm is sort of just like a background element you know never actually fight it or anything mm -hmm. but at the end you, sh you, you know you see Sonic actually hitting it destroying it by the end but it's sort of just like shifting along the level of avoiding hazards and stuff and it played fine I, I mean it wasn't it wasn't mind blowing or anything but it was a simple it was a nice change of pace I can feel I feel like it'll be I, I, I don't think there'll be too many of those sections at least not I didn't get that sense but it felt like a night, like keeping the same type of gameplay, but also changing up the pace for how you're actually playing it. So, is it you're shifting the stage, or you're? I I, I think you're just shifting Sonic, if I can remember correctly. Okay. Yeah, and you're just going up along, and I don't think there's any point where you go upside down or anything like that. But you're sort of like there's these holes that you I don't like. You cannot jump at all. Uh, as the other big thing, so you can't like there'll be like these pits to the side of you, but you can't jump over them to the other side and be safe. You actually have to follow the path and follow along it. So okay. it, it's 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 more about quick reflexes and seeing what's coming up and making sure to dodge that. But it makes it a little bit trickier because you can't jump. Yeah. Okay. That that sounds actually pretty interesting. So it, it's kind of like you know quick stepping kind of. Pretty much. It's just it's a whole mini game based around uh, quick stepping. Okay, so it, it's that sounds kind of like a, what is it um like the speed sections and Sonic Boom for Wii U and like Sonic Dash, but oh yeah yeah yeah. But you know that that's not bad. I don't think that's terrible at all. You know, because playing that kind of gameplay style in you know short little bits, it's actually pretty fun. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's why I think Sonic Dash is a mobile game because you know <laughs> just pick it up and you just play it for a little bit and then you're like, okay, I'm done with this for now, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, that's good. I, you know, that's not a terrible thing at all. But as long as it's not just like, you know, the entire game, <laughs> then I think yeah. I think that's I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's the, it's definitely not going to be the entire game. It's probably just going to be a nice little thing to break things up and uh, whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess how do you feel about Amy being being cut in favor of sticks? I thought that was interesting, not because of 
just, you know, playing with sticks, but because they kind of... It seemed like they were trying to push Amy as such a strong character, you know, someone who's independent. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they have in the 3DS version to where she ends up being kidnapped. So it's just like, oh, well, there's a damsel in distress story again. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. But she kind of seems a bit goofy and... She's probably going to be one of those characters that a lot of kids are really going to like. I like, uh, you know, her ability that she has, you know, like how she has the boomerang that she can toss out and hit switches and whatnot. I think that's pretty cool. And, yeah. um, you know, we'll definitely open up some new pathways. And I heard that she's supposed to be really good with uh, combat. So I'm not sure if she's going to be playable in the Wii U version. We haven't gotten any confirmation just yet on that. What are some characters you would like actually like to see in this game? Oh, I mean, there's so many characters like you could like. It'd be interesting to see the Sonic Boom redesign for. I mean, obviously, you know, Shadow, uh, Blaze, Hell. You know, everybody's making fun of the whole Big the Cat having a redesign with all the bandages all over him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you think rivalries you could have Jet the Hawk from the Rider series. There's a lot of characters they can play with from the Sonic series. There's so many. I think since it is a re uh, is a bit of a reboot and they're still starting out, they'll probably stick to some of the uh, more popular characters if they do have guest appearances. Mm -hmm. One thing I thought would have been, you know, a good thing to capitalize on because, you know, Sega like they said they're trying to target a younger audience with this game mm -hmm. I thought it would have been somewhat of a smart idea I mean it may not be something I like because I mean it's gonna be something that you know would be um, you know taking money from my wallet <laughs> but I think it would have been cool if they actually did something like a Skylanders approach oh interesting with the game and there were so many rumors going on before about how they were going to try and do that hmm. and you know I think what they could have done was they could have had it to where you have those main four characters that you play it's like Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles and later on you can get like figurines and considering that this is a Wii U exclusive the Wii U has um what, what's that little thing called? NFC technology? NFC, NFC technology exactly so people wouldn't have to buy a little plastic stand like they would have to with Skylanders or Disney Infinity. It would just mm -hmm. be built into the system and since it's exclusive for the Wii U, you know, they could do that. I mean, mm -hmm. sadly, 3DS people would probably be left out of that. It is technically possible because they have all those Smash Brothers figures and I have have heard that they want to have a figure for each character for every character. I mean, that's the plan they said. Mm -hmm. um, so Sonic potentially could have a figure. So it is completely possible for Sega to have extra features be unlocked with that Sonic figure. Uh, yeah, and that's that's what I think would be really, really awesome if they did something like that. Even though, like I said, that's something that would eat into some people's wallets. When I'm saying this, I'm trying to think of something that will help Sega out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. and you know, that seems like a smart idea to do. Kind of go like the Skylanders approach. One of the things I talked about with Andre and Ash uh, not too long ago about uh, Smash Brothers one and the Amiibo figures is for people who don't want to have all the all the plastic toys and don't like have the room to have all the toys around they can maybe do like an a la carte style where you can get the same content that you unlock with the amiibos just as dlc the advantage of it getting the amiibo is that you get it like you, that figure gets you all the unlocks for, across multiple games but the dlc is only for that one game huh we, we thought that'd be a nice little compromise between the two halves so that people who don't want to get the figure and spend the money for that, they can spend a little bit cheaper option just to get the specific DLC they want for the game. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Like, I, even though I don't think the idea of the Amiibo is really... I, honestly, I still don't fully understand it. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessary, but I, I just love the whole idea of figurines, because like, I'm a huge collector <laughs> of figurines yeah. and stuff, so I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting all of these. <laughs> so, I, I know you're feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I don't know what they do, yeah, here here's my money. <laughs> just just give just them all cool. to me. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, there's all kinds of characters they can use. I'd love to have like unlockable characters. Like, yeah, 
there's characters that you can make that that'll play like like Sonic. There's characters you can make that'll play like Sticks and Knuckles and all that. There's you know that's that's the whole point of Sonic Heroes is that these characters play similarly uh, to each other. So you know it'd be kind of cool to see, see introductions of them. Yeah, um, one character I really do want to see, you know, besides you know everyone's pick Shadow, <laughs> um, <laughs> I really want to see Espio. I've, yeah. I've always loved Espio. And I think he'd be really, really cool in the Sonic Boom universe, considering he has the ability of espionage and sticking onto walls and climbing up them. I don't know, I think that'd be pretty cool. And then not only that, he has his tongue too, so instead of the tether, he could use his tongue. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome. I, I think that'd be pretty amusing. <laughs> Using his shirt, you can put him in a sticks roll and he can use his shurikens to activate switches and stuff like oh, that. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> nice. Oh, I'd be honest. Yeah, there's always been something cool about SBO. <laughs> He's always been one of my favorites, and it, it'd be great to see him as a playable character. <laughs> oh gosh, what if they do this as a DLC pack where they do like Team Chaotix pack where like they got uh, Vector being being Knuckles in the game, you got Charmy being Tails, you got SBO being Sticks, and then you get Mighty back. Oh yeah, for, for Sonic, Mighty. actually bring Mighty back for something. Oh my god. How amazing would that be for the to bring back Team Chaotix in, the, in, the, in this game? <laughs> Dude, that'd be so great! <laughs> oh my god, you got me like ah Sega. <laughs> we gotta somehow Please. get in. We have to get in contact with them, give them this idea. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> so they can make this a reality. Because I know if if people saw that, even if you know they weren't terribly fun of the game, I'm pretty sure people will pick that up because. That's just such a huge nostalgia factor. Mm -hmm. One of the other big things about the Sonic series is the music, and I, I mean, it, maybe it was the show floor, but I didn't really hear anything out of the Wii U version, did you? No, I, I really didn't. Uh, the music that I, like, honestly, I didn't really hear anything that was, like, noticeable or that really stood out at all. Even though we were on the show floor, it was kind of a bit quiet <laughs> around the Sega booth, <laughs> yeah. so you know you could hear some of the dialogue, but there was no music that really stood out at all. It seemed more of like an environment. If you went to the jungle stage, mm -hmm. you know you kind of get like that jungle music, but it wasn't anything that stood out at all. It was just it's a bit more subtle, which is not something we're kind of used to with Sonic. Yeah, went... which I found really disappointing because I was really excited, you know, to see. What the soundtrack is going to be like because even though you know sonic games can sometimes not be the best the music's always good the music is always good so that's always something you can look forward to in a sonic <laughs> game but the entire time while i played the demo i didn't even think about the music because there wasn't anything there that you know ca caught my ear at all yeah uh and that doesn't seem to be the case at all once again <laughs> for for the 3ds version shattered crystal because uh i found out during my interview that I believe his name is Richard Jakes, uh, the the composer for the Saturn version's uh, music of Sonic 3D Blast, is going to be doing the the soundtrack for the 3DS version. Oh my god, that that's amazing! <laughs> Holy crap, because he did Sonic R, right? I think he did a bit of Sonic R too. I I I have to look up his entire repertoire, but yeah, I think he's you know they talked about doing some Sonic R stuff. They did talked about him doing 3D Blast for Saturn. Yeah, he actually did do Sonic R. I was trying to get direct audio for the channel, so I've, I can't quite remember it offhand. But I remember when I did listen back to the gameplay, I was like, oh yeah, this is some really good music. Holy crap, that's awesome! Because <laughs> like I know a lot of people hate Sonic R soundtrack. But I, I loved, <laughs> I loved the soundtrack so much. I sing along with that. I will always love Supersonic Racing. <laughs> yes, no shame whatsoever. I, I will bust out singing along with those tunes whenever I hear them. I love uh, Back in Time, Diamond in the Sky. <laughs> Probably sound like a huge nerd right now. Oh, but that's, no. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I'm so happy about that. Yeah, so at least we'll have some iconic music from the 3DS version. That's, and that's really the thing I've taken away from our experience with it is that the the the, the Wii U uh, version of Sonic Boom looks like it has potential to maybe be good, but the 3DS version is already good. Yeah, it, it's just running away with it. it. It's it's already amazing as it is, and it's still not out yet. So there's so many things to look forward to with the 3DS version, <laughs> and, and it's oh, yeah. crazy because 
you know, even though I know some people may be like, oh, well, I didn't like Sonic Colors on the Wii or whatever, or I didn't like Sonic Lost World on the Wii U, I've always felt that the handheld games were never as good. They were just something that, you know, you can pick up if you want to to play on the side, but they were never as good as the console versions of mm -hmm. uh, the game. Except for Sonic Lost World 3DS. That, w that was just straight up garbage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never touch that game. It's good only on the first world, but then after that, it's complete frustration afterwards. It's, it's so surprising that I'm actually enjoying the handheld version of this big game more than the console version. So it's kind of a bit weird to kind of take in, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, you know, this is... This is good, you know, a handheld Sonic game is actually getting, you know, a lot of spotlight now. Yeah, I, that's the hope because they, 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 I really want to impress on people that the, the 3DS version is worth your time. Uh, I definitely got that from them and again, during the interview, they told me that the game's almost done for them. Yeah. They, they are almost finished, so that, that's probably why it looks so good is because we're looking at a near finished version. Exactly. It's, it's amazing because, you know... We get so much more info on like the Wii U version and all that stuff. And it's just like the handheld version is so overlooked that, you know, it, it does kind of stink because these people like Sun Zero Games have done such a fantastic job with this game that they definitely need more recognition. They need they need this game to be brought out more to the public so that, you know, people can actually try it out because for them to have put so much effort and hard work into this, you know, making such a great game, it, it needs to be recognized. So, mm -hmm. definitely for anyone who's watching this right now, the 3DS version is amazing. It, it's definitely one of the games you want to pick up if you like Sonic. I, I, I completely agree. The Wii U version could definitely be something good. Uh, it has that potential, but as of right now, you know, it. It's not quite there yet, but the 3DS version, keep an eye on it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the best I can yeah. say. Just keep an eye on it because I think if you're any kind of Sonic fan, there is going to be something that you'll like here with it. I really feel that way. Definitely. Well, guys, I think that about covers it for our discussion of Sonic Boom. But uh, before we go, I do want to leave you guys with this clip of Kobe's channel because, you know, he's well worth checking out, especially if you like Sonic stuff or just Nintendo stuff in general, which I know you guys do. So let's play a clip from that real quick. All right. But man, this brings back so many memories to when I played this game for the first time as a kid. As when I was younger, I actually did not own a Sega Dreamcast. I was a bit too young at the time and, you know, my parents didn't really want me getting into video games when I was young. But the first time I actually saw and played this game was at a friend's house as he owned a Nintendo game. GameCube, and I could not believe that Sonic could actually run in 3D. Like, I, I was completely blown away by it that that Christmas I begged for a Nintendo GameCube so I could play this game, Sonic Adventure 2, all the other amazing Sonic games that were released on the GameCube. And man, good times, man, good times. GameCube was one of the best um, consoles ever in the history of gaming. Absolutely love it. Anyway, here we are. Free Willy! Oh my god, run away! <laughs> Once again, I want to thank Kobe for joining me today and definitely suggest checking out his channel for more on Sonic and other Nintendo games. And we'll actually have a link to his videos in the description below. So thank you, Kobe, for joining me today to talk about Sonic Boom. No problem, dude. Thank you again for having me. It was such a pleasure to be here on this channel. And, uh, you know, as always, if you ever need me again, just let me know. <laughs> oh yeah, you you think of a topic, we'll be, you, you're invited to come right on back. Well, I love having talks like this it's always uh, it's always a lot of fun for me so I'm, I'm glad you had a good time too awesome thank you <laughs> <laughs> but of course thank you guys for watching uh, if you like this video be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at game explain until next time guys bye